All right. So you see, here's Paul again having to give a defense of himself, as he's had to do several other times. Yeah, pro se, he spoke for himself. Verse number 1, Acts chapter 26, verse number 1, Then Agrippa said to Paul, Thou art permitted to speak for thyself. So Paul waited politely for his turn to speak. Again, there, there is something to having some courtroom decorum about yourself. If, if you want to have any chance of uh, being found reasonable, you need to behave reasonably Amen. Uh, when you're in court. Because a lot of times you you can have all the facts lined up right, but the way you present those facts or the That's way right. you behave, if you can shipwreck your own case, uh, because if it comes down to taking one person's word over another, you're looking at the character of the man. Yeah. Yep. Um, to make the determination. So then Agrippa said unto Paul, Thou art permitted to speak for thyself. And Paul stretched forth the hand and answered for himself. He didn't have turtles speak for him. Mm-hmm. He spoke for himself. Right. A lot of people like to talk about people, say things about people, when that person isn't there. You ought to give a person a chance to speak for himself. Amen. Um, you should dismiss a lot of what you hear about people until you talk to that person himself or yeah. Amen. Because people have a way of twisting things or putting a slant on things or 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 only dispensing part of the information to uh, give a, uh, an idea about a person that they wish to portray about that person, you can't go by second, third-hand information. Yep. I've seen so many problems between brethren because of what other people are saying. Amen. And nobody ever goes to the guy that's being talked about, right. mm -hmm. and which could fix the whole thing or clarify the whole thing. <coughs> so Paul, he speaks for himself. He stretched forth the hand and answered for himself. He said, I think myself happy, King Agrippa, because I shall answer for myself. He's happy that he gets to answer for himself. If you've ever had anybody talk about you, you would be happy to get to answer for yourself, especially with whatever it was said was Paul. Mm -hmm. no. Thank you for giving me a chance to defend myself. Yes. Amen. Because I shall answer for myself this day before thee, touching all things whereof I am accused of the Jews, especially because I know thee to be an expert in all customs and questions which are among the Jews. Wherefore, I beseech thee to hear me patiently. So he's basically giving us a glimpse into who Agrippa is. Agrippa has some sort of expertise in the Jewish religion. Now, I told you before, and it's not found in the Bible, and you don't have to believe it, but if, if Agrippa is the brother of Drusilla and Bernice, who have been named in the Bible here, if they're siblings, if you look at chapter 24, verse number 24, you find out that Drusilla was a Jewess. So there's something about the Jewish religion in the family. There's some sort of connection which would give you a logical understanding of why Agrippa would know this stuff. Right. Now let's pretend none of that is true about the sisters and all that. Nonetheless, Agrippa is an expert in the Jewish religion. That we do know. Because Paul just said so, unless he lied. So he's like, man, this is great. I'm glad to be talking to you because you're the third guy I've had to defend myself with here. I've had Felix, I've had Festus, and now at least a fresh voice. Remember, Paul's been in bonds now, not shackles, but in prison, in jail, for two years. And he hasn't even had a trial yet. Well, he's had three sort of trials, and because they can't find him guilty, they just hold on to him until they can find him guilty. That's just crazy. You know, because we've got to be just and do things properly. <laughs> so they hold on to the guy for two years, and he's like, man, I'm glad to talk to somebody new. Because under Felix, I didn't get released. Under Festus, I didn't get released, even though they both found that I wasn't guilty of anything. Right. So, man, am I glad to speak to a new face. <laughs> Maybe something can get done here. I've been locked up for two years. Man. Remember, he knows he's going to Rome. Jesus told him something. Do you remember? Jesus came and visited him and told him, look, you're going to go testify of me in Rome. So Paul knows he's going to Rome, but he probably didn't know it was going to take two years. I think sometimes we know what God wants us to 
do or we have an inkling of what God might have for us, but we don't have the patience to go along with God's time for it. Sure. And so we say, well, it hasn't happened yet, and I know it's supposed to happen, so I'm going to make it happen. Yeah. And then you mess the whole thing up because you didn't wait for God's time. Amen. That's one thing I try to be careful of is God's time. I try not to force things. I try not to make things happen when I want them to happen. A lot of times I want them to happen right now so I can get it over with. You know, let's just do this. <laughs> you know, let's get this thing over with. But I try to uh, allow God to get in there. Um, and so you can see how Paul's like, wow, Lord, I, mean, I know you said I'm going to Rome, so I'm not really concerned about whether that's going to happen because obviously he trusts the Lord in his word. But two years? That's a long time waiting to go to Rome. So. Yeah. So he's happy. He's more than happy to do this and to speak before Agrippa. Now remember, it's likely there aren't any Jews at this at this uh, um, proceeding. Yeah, this forum, this uh, uh, thing that's going on here, this pre-trial hearing. Or whatever. There, there isn't there isn't any Jews there. If there are, they're not there as the Sanhedrin or in any official capacity. The prosecutor doesn't seem to be there. Uh, or, the, or the plaintiff, or whatever you would have, Paul being the defendant. Um, Paul is just giving a defense of who he is because at the end of chapter 25, Festus reveals, look, I can't send this guy to Caesar if I can't even write what he's charged with. I'm going to look like an idiot. I can't send a prisoner to Caesar's court, and I don't even have anything to write as far as charges. So help me out, guys. He calls all these people together figure out what they can charge him with so he can send them, get them out of his jurisdiction. Just just be done with it. I'm throwing away. So verse number four. Well, he tells, at the end of verse number three, he tells Agrippa, look, I know you're an expert concerning the customs and questions that are among the Jews, so hear me out. Don't jump to a conclusion like the Jews have done and want to kill me because they're not understanding me. Maybe you'll understand me, King of but hear me out. Please let me give this defense. Don't cut me off. Verse number four. My manner of life from my youth, which was at the first among my own nation at Jerusalem, know all the Jews. They know my life. Yeah. Which knew me from the beginning, if they would testify that after the most straightest sect of our religion, I lived a Pharisee. Now it's important that you focus on the words here. The Jews have been accusing Paul ad hominem, which means they've been attacking his character. They haven't been attacking his facts. They haven't come out and said, well, what Paul's presenting here is against the Scriptures. Uh, he's been proven to them with the Scriptures that what he believes is in the found in the Scriptures by, the Moses, by Moses and the prophets. So they attack his character. That's called an ad hominem attack. You see it all the time. Somebody nails you factually, and so you just, oh, well, he's a jerk. He's a liar. You know. He's a liar. You know, which has nothing to do with argue the facts, okay? Just argue the point. I mean, you're just avoiding the whole point altogether. So now you're using character assassination. That means you don't have any you don't have any facts. Right. You can't reason with the facts of the case, so you have to attack the man. So Paul now has to defend his character. And that's what he's doing. Listen, all this stuff you've heard, Agrippa, all the stuff you've heard, Festus, all the stuff you people have heard. Let me defend myself. Let me tell you what my life is like, what my character is. And he says that they, either they would testify themselves that after the most straightest sect of our religion, I lived a Pharisee. Now look at that word straightest. Notice there isn't a G-H in that word. See how it says S-T-R-A-I-T-E-S-T? -E -E -E, straightest sect. Notice our, our little banner right here, which is quoting Matthew chapter seven. Straight is the gate. It's not talking about it's not talking about straight from point A to point B, a straight line. That's S T R A I G H T. Okay, that's straight. No arc, no curve. 